Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutforth. Hello. Hi. This week, we'll be talking about Smash Mouth's prophecy. Smash, Smash Mouth's prophecy. prophecy. What did they? What did they predict? Judging by the hole in the satellite picture. The ice we skate is getting pretty thin. The water's <gasps> getting warm, so we ah, might as well swim. Uh, My oh. world's on fire. How about yours? That's the way I like it. And I never get bored. Wait, so global- what you're saying is Smash Mouth is a global warming apologist because that's the way <laughs> he likes it. And they he never gets bored. Warming. Well, he's, wow. I mean, he was, an, he was an early, you know, they, he, they were early. He, he. <laughs> Smash Mouth, the man. Just the one. You know, they were, they were, in, they were in it early, but they're not against it. Otherwise they would have stopped it. So I guess we have Smash Mouth to blame for this. And I can't <laughs> believe episode. it. That is absolutely Speaking crazy. into existence. So for anyone that didn't understand the past few seconds, we are talking about climate change today. It's yes. a, it's a biggie. But first I do want to say happy birthday. To who? To us. Late, man. <gasps> oh, oh, the side guys. The side oh, guys. This is our one year anniversary. It's our one year anniversary. We've been oh, doing this cute. for a whole year. God. Wow. Does it feel like a year one to you guys? One long, long year. Yes, it does feel it like does a year. It does feel like a year. Like, definitely. Like a year. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it feels like longer. I mean, Corey, it feels like I've been in quarantine for a year. So it feels yeah, like we true. just started side guys about five years ago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was so long ago. So much has happened. And if you stick around to the end, we've got some messages from uh, from some of the people that listen to this. Oh, cute! Just little little happy birthday things, little um little messages. So stick Hell around yeah. for that. But first, a big old slog into climate change. Now, some people would say, Corey, you can't cover all of climate change in one podcast. That is mad. That's insane. You shouldn't do that. And to them, I say, I'm going to do it anyway. Why not? Because I mean, I don't know. Knock it out in one go. Not doing a two parter. I mean, there, there's going to be a second part for other parts, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm encapsulating all of, I'm going to try and encapsulate all of climate change and debunk climate deniers. And oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. There's a whole, there'd be a whole other episode on actually fully stopping climate change because that's a, that's a whole other kettle of fish. That's, yeah. Kettle of dead fish. Question. Kind of worms, isn't it? On climate change denial. Can I ask a question? Yes. Do you think that <laughs> I do think I, often <laughs> and I <laughs> must preface this by saying I don't think this is the case but do you think there is any kind of possibility based on the fact that science um frequently discovers it's wrong about things that that we may be entirely wrong about the whole thing I think it's between a 0.1 and 5% chance okay based on what I've read interesting but regardless it's quite wide I mean, if there's a 95%, <laughs> if you've got a 95% chance of something happening, yeah, you probably, want, try you and probably want to try and yeah. stop that thing. I really like the way that Greta Thunberg talks about it, where she, even she is somebody who's so vocal about climate change, right? But she writes, often she writes, the best science we have now suggests this. Mm, absolutely. I think that is such, like, she, important like, wording. Such important wording, because, you know, we never know for certain what is going on and what the case is we always are just going with our best idea of mm-hmm. the case okay yeah that's true so ultimately we we know that climate change is happening i think the debate would be whether or the real de- if you want to have a debate if you want to be a climate denier your debate shouldn't be is this happening it should be why is this happening mm. to be clear i don't want to be a climate denier <laughs> <laughs> it's too late luke <laughs> you've well, made your bed so the only thing is is i wonder is like i don't I, this is <laughs> I I I am returning to my role on this podcast, which is to try and pick holes in things, right? Like the ozone and layer. Look, it was you. What I what like? You get your hands on Australia. <laughs> I won. What I wonder is, is like for example, we are um, rule. Like you have certain things in science, and I'm not claiming to be a scientist, and so I don't necessarily think that this is the case but for example we i I always come back to this weird thing that always strikes me as so strange that we have classified the speed of light as defined essentially by itself like the speed of light will remain constant even if the speed of light changes it will appear to remain constant to us and the Mm. the size of a meter will change or the length of a second will change instead and so the only thing i wonder is well what if actually in some way um the very matter that we use to make the measurements is changing and it appears to create the results that we have um, and and perceive 
and actually it's a false positive result. And I don't think that's the case, but I, you have to think out, outside the box in these situations and go, well, what other... It's like the, what I said to you a while ago on the podcast where you said the Big Bang was the universe began to expand. And I said, or the universe stayed the same size and everything in it contracted. And that may seem like I'm just saying something silly and playing devil's advocate or being a little bit facetious, but I think that it's important for us to share the data rather than the story or conclusion we've come to because the story or conclusion can be wrong while the data still being correct yes, yes. <laughs> makes sense <laughs> this is why we have you on the podcast <laughs> yes oh, i'm wrong i may be completely battling but, crap i mean but, yeah. the thing is if you say that uh I'll, I'll say similar to what i said um then with the with the big bang and the contraction it, it's almost in in this case it's almost irrelevant because the story that i'm telling is a data story so i'm not going to say when i say climate change is happening what i mean is we have measured we have measured a change in temperature and that temperature is increasing along with that we've noticed things that you would expect to happen with the change in temperature um species dying out um the oceans rising uh, uh, yeah. uh antarctic ice sheets uh, well, uh, ice yeah. sheets melting we've we spotted all of that so whether it's a case of the matter that we're that we use is changing or climate the climate is changing it, it doesn't really matter it's the same result and what yes. we've also observed is that uh certain actions will reduce that change so regardless of the why doing if we're doing x gets y result you know what i mean yes so I, yes. I think that line of thinking is really important luke but yeah um yeah, I, totally oh, I don't. I don't in any way think that climate change is not happening. I no, want to no, be no. very clear about <laughs> I that. I know, I know you. But the, the I just want us to be. I, I want us to treat the public when we're educating the public with the respect to give mm -hmm. them not just tell them the story, but to allow them to come to the conclusion themselves. Because otherwise, if if people suspect they're just being told a story, um, mm -hmm. I think it leads it leaves the public open to then going down and believing a totally different story like climate change denial and it's all a government conspiracy and it's all china so, and it's all so yeah something similar is yeah. going on with coronavirus at the moment with a uh, exactly you know. Ab i mean absolutely i think this is i see this as um a spiritual sequel to the vaccines episode i was just thinking this earlier yeah in that i'm not gonna I, i've actually got a line here that says I, I mean i don't really i don't really care what you i don't really care what you think about what we should do about climate change i'm giving you the data that shows that it's almost certainly happening. Uh, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm giving you the data and whatever conclusions you draw from that are yours to, are yours to draw. But if you, if you see the climate literally changing mm -hmm. um, through, should... through the data and decide mm, it's not, then I, should... I don't really know. Yeah. I don't know what to say. We should um, be tailoring mm -hmm. our actions to the, the best data that we have. I think, I think, and again, I do think that's a really important line of thinking. I also think that, it can get in the way of practicalities. So practically right now, mm. <clears throat> sorry. So practically right now, what we need to do is to, what, what we might want to do is to try and curb uh, climate change and thinking about whether um, it's actually, it's actually how it would actually be happening, whether it's happening because of a change in matter that we can't, that we can't measure or mm. because of what we think it is right now. Mm -hmm. That is that is an interesting line of thinking, and it is it is an, it is an important line of thinking. But also, the problem that we need to solve right now is that it's getting hotter, and we don't is, want yeah, that. We're not sure. live him the change of matter thing, by the way, it was just a thing I pulled out my ass. No, I it's, do not it's totally have fair. Any it's idea. Like, no, it's idea. like <laughs> it's like okay, so your house is on fire, and you're like, is that the Northern Lights or is my house on fire? <laughs> sure, I don't yeah. really care which what it, it which what it is. If my house is on fire, I'm going to try yeah, and stop it. You know, it. even if yeah. I'm wrong about it. That was a little Simpsons reference. Um, <laughs> it's always one. Always one. So what is the climate change? Well, I'm going to start off with what is climate? Because people seem to have an issue with that. Do is either it, of you guys know what climate is? Is it the weather? It's not the weather. It's not the weather. Hint, it's not the weather. It's really not the weather. Uh, I say, really hate it when people are like, oh, but it was really hot. Uh, sorry, it was really cold last winter. Yeah. Therefore, I mean, climate change, not real. Yeah. So saying- Checkmate atheists. Yeah. Saying that climate is weather is, you're almost there. Climate is a, a long-term long yeah. trend. Yeah, so climate is like yeah. big weather. Um, yeah, <laughs> long-term weather. Climate. Oh, okay, saying that uh, weather is climate is like saying a branch is a tree. Ah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, basically, climate. Are, but as we all know, if you cut a, a branch and you plant it, it can turn into a tree. And that's right. If you cut a weather and you plant it, it can <laughs> <grow> <laughs> turns into a climate. <laughs> 
the metaphor doesn't end. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, climate. Um, uh, this is from Britannica. Uh, climate, uh, conditions of the atmosphere at a particular location over a long period of time, is the long-term summation of the atmospheric elements and their variations that over short time term periods constitute weather. So basically, climate is just weather over a long period. It's a big trend um, for a particular area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a big trend for a particular area. Mm-hmm. So um, let's say the UK would have a, a different climate to Antarctica because they're different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. But um, you could say the global climate because that's also an area. But you can't say... A really big area. Yeah, it's a really big area. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> climate, you can have one hot day and that doesn't mean that... You can have one hot day. The climate of that day is quite hot. That's the weather. Yeah. If you have... Shh. <laughs> you have one hot day that's weather if you have one hot decade it's probably climate yeah you know so um those elements that i mentioned um the the the, the parts that kind of make up climate would be solar radiation temperature humidity precipitation which is like rain or snowfall um so that's the frequency and the amount of it mm-hmm. um atmospheric pressure and wind which is the speed and direction of wind um so like i said if you've got a if you've got a really cold day that doesn't mean that global warming isn't happening that's just <laughs> It's just one cold day. It's just one cold day. <laughs> it's like, it does happen. I, I'm depressed, but actually I had a, a good day the other week, so I guess oh, I'm not... I was happy the other day. Yeah. guess I don't have depression. Cured. Uh, yeah. No, that, that's not how it works. So, the Earth... The Earth? The Earth. The Earth. The Earth. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> the Earth's average surface temperature is about 15 degrees uh, centi- uh, centigrade. Um, but it's been, it's been different in the past. Obviously, you remember um, Ice Ages. Mm-hmm. Not yourself, not, per- not personally, not personally, no. But I do remember. You've heard of them. I remember the movie. Yeah. The issue is, if you try and Google Ice Age, you get the movie. <laughs> like the entire first page it's of true. results is uh, is a movie, which is irritating because wow, DreamWorks really were trying to suppress uh, <laughs> public information. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, do you know what they're doing? I just think it's I think it's one big conspiracy, man. It's like when you yeah. Google Disney Frozen, it comes up with a film and not about not Walt Disney Frozen. cryogenically freezing himself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is so clever. So clever. Big brain. And that's why the Frozen was rushed out. They, they, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, he, maybe the cryogenically freezing bit was coming up in the search results. They're like, damn, we need a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Get a sequel out quick. <laughs> That's why it's called Frozen 2. It didn't have a different name. Frozen it's just, 2. No, they couldn't have called it something different. I look forward to Di- Disney Pixar's 2022 film, Cryogenically Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> what Disney Cryogenically Frozen? <laughs> and and the Marvel film, Brain in a Freezer. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually going to rename Disney Plus to Frozen Head. <laughs> 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 There's a reason Futurama isn't on Disney Plus. Yeah, <laughs> they don't people thinking too deeply about it. Maybe Disney bought Fox because The Simpsons is far too good at predicting the future, and they need to cover that shit up. I've actually got an episode. Yeah. Uh, an episode. I've actually got a video <laughs> I've written about The Simpsons oh. predicting the future. So wow. um, good. Uh, don't don't step on my toes here, man. I've I've I've, 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 I've uncovered the big <laughs> I've uncovered the big story. You're spoiling hey, Curry's Curry. future video, <laughs> ruining things you're about to do in the future is one of my jobs on this, <laughs> this podcast. You're very good at it. Can you see I into have, the future? Thank you. I actually, yes, I am Professor Trelawney. <laughs> he will return tonight. He will return tonight. <laughs> so back to climate. We went off a little bit, but coming on back, um, yeah, climate has been higher and lower in the past, but. It is on a trend upwards right now. The, the temperature is is trending upwards. So there are there are natural fluctuations in climate, you know, ice ages. Um, but this change is probably due to humans. Um, so you might have heard that we're living through an ice age right now. Did you know that? Uh, I did not know. No. No, we're in. We? So we're in. An, we are in an ice age right now. So um, an ice age is basically a long period of time, like millions to tens of millions of years, where temperatures are relatively cold and big parts of the earth are covered by ice sheets like continental ice sheets now in ice ages you've, you'll no, notice that that's not happening right now you know no. there's not that much ice about and it's no there know, isn't it's it's quite warm out right now down the bottom there's a bit of ice yeah, there's a little bit up the top there's, up the top, some, there's a little bit more yeah but in the middle yeah it's yeah. all right so that basically that's basically because uh, there are cycles within ice ages. An ice age isn't just one big ten million year block of time where it's freezing. 
there's and there's that, like you wake up one day and it's just <laughs> all sunshine and rainbows. You never know. Next week it could just be <laughs> frozen. Um, no, it's there. There are cycles within ice ages. So we're in an ice age right now, but we're in a warmer period of an ice age. Right. Um, so these are called what? What? That's weird to know. <laughs> okay. Carry yeah, on. It, yeah. It, it's weird, right? Um, so. There are short term, like like I said, there's short term periods of warmer uh, temperatures, and that's when glaciers retreat, which are those are called interglacials or interglacial cycles. Mm-hmm. So we're in that right now. That's why it's not freezing. Hang but on, but it's also getting warmer. I I I'm confused. Yes. So we are in an ice age, and yes. inside of ice ages, there are brief periods where it gets hotter. Yeah, but not hot enough to be out of the ice age. <laughs> That isn't that what's happening in the world. Okay, okay, okay. In, think how about, is that different? Okay, how during, is that different? okay, during summer, right? Yeah, you have. Yeah. You, it's it can be. Or, okay, how about this? During winter, it can be really cold, mm. right? Yeah, but you can have a quite a warm day in winter. Doesn't mean that winter yes. is over yeah. all of a sudden. No, no, of course. I just mean how does in is it is it the rate of increase of temperature that means that we th- are making the conclu- taking the making uh, coming to the conclusion that we are causing the heating up of the world rather than it being one of the things that you've just mentioned where you're inside of an ice age, but you have brief periods where it gets hotter. So yeah, the, the increase that we've, that we, that, the increase that we've noticed has happened along with human. Sorry. So what you're saying is we need to flatten the curve. <laughs> <laughs> There's no talk of that right now. No, no mentioning curves. No, no, mention, no mention of this. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's another curve. We need to flatten it. We need, we need to, f- to flatten a lot flatten of curves. Flatten all curves. Yeah, get rid of them all. So, yeah, so there have been five major ice ages um, throughout the history of Earth. Ice um, Age 1, Ice Age 2, melt, the meltdown. Ice Age 3, <laughs> um, something. Ice Age 4, Continental drift. Continental drift. And then there was a fifth one. I can't remember what uh, it was ice, called. When I googled Ice Age, Ice Age 7 was a suggested one, and I I can't How many ice ages are there? Hold on. I, I feel like, okay, there's, I think there's six. What? No, I think there's six ice ages. What? Um, And then the seventh one might be in production. That is crazy. No, there's five. There's five. There's five? Ice then age, why did Ice Age 7 come up? Ice Age the oh Meltdown. Oh my god, okay. Ice Age 3, five. Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Yeah, that was a really good one. That, had that was my head. favorite. Ice Age Continental Drift. And then Ice Age 5, Collision Course. Oh, because they're on a continent. Yeah. Co- yeah, crashing. But it's, there's also seven Ice Age short films and two Ice Age television specials and one Ice Age play and four Ice Age games and wait, five no, Ice Age soundtracks. No, no, no. Hold on. A play. A play. Oh, Ice surprising. Age Live, a mammoth adventure. <laughs> I both love and hate that. Anyway, can we I, I take it. some of that Patreon money and do a Side Guys uh, outing <laughs> to see some, <laughs> the Ice Age play? <laughs> I would never waste a Patreon money on something so trivial. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean trivial frivolous uh i don't think this is frivolous man i think <laughs> you are <laughs> underestimating oh the importance the of names the of some of these short play. films cosmic scrat catastrophe oh because they're <laughs> scrat yeah, yeah scrat scrat catastrophe scrat spaced out continental crack up part two well okay. if you learn nothing today in this episode you have learned that there is a ice age play ice age no time for nuts Okay, let's <laughs> let's just move on and talk about the actual ice ages. <laughs> so there have been um, sorry, there's been five. We've been five ice. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! There've been five. It's ice funny ages. that they stopped the films at five. They stopped yeah, them at there's six, also been, didn't they? No, five. Five. Oh, good. They were talking about a six. Oh, they're waiting. That's I don't know it. why okay. seven came up. Oh, they're waiting. They're waiting for the they're waiting ice, for the ice age to happen. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. And yeah. then they'll make a film. Yeah. They've started global Based warming. That's oh. what they've done. <gasps> Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, I think actually the 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 Walt Disney Company is leading the attempt to stop global warming warming in order that there can be another ice age that they can release another ice age movie. <laughs> Just so they can, you know, <laughs> millions of years in the future they can make a film based off this ice age. Do you remember how we were going to make an episode about facts about? <laughs> <laughs> you remember when you then invited me and James onto the podcast? <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, so there have been five major ice ages. Um, the earliest was over two billion years ago. And the most recent one uh, started about three million years ago, and it's still still going, still going, we're still in kicking. It. Uh, so we're we're in one of those warm periods, as I said, and that began about eleven thousand years ago. So, <clears throat> God. So the last period of glaciation ended. Uh, ooh, the last period of glaciation peaked about twenty thousand years ago. So it started getting 
That's quite recent. Yeah, it started getting warmer about 20,000 years ago, and then we entered an interglacial period in uh, about 11,000 years ago, which is about 11,000 years uh, BL. If anyone uses BL. <laughs> Everyone uses <laughs> I think BL. The difference of 26 years is really <laughs> that much on the scale of 11,000 years. <laughs> How on earth did you do that calculation in your head, Corey? <laughs> So at that point, um, when it was at its peak, um, the Ice Age, the average temperature was probably about five degrees colder than it is today. And in some places it could be um, as much as 22 degrees colder. That that doesn't sound like a lot. But it doesn't sound like a lot, but imagine, uh, yeah, if, but imagine if in summer in Britain, it was zero mm-hmm. degrees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've never been in a pool that's like 29 degrees and it's like just horrible. Yeah. It's, unless it's a hot, hot, hot day. A pool of 29 degrees that you think of as quite warm. 29 degrees. Oh, nice. It's toasty. If that's a pool, that's not nice. And if you've got a pool at zero cool. degrees, you've got a pool of ice. Mm. That's true. There should got be a no, word for an it. ice rink. <laughs> <laughs> an ice rink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what it is. So, oh my God. So, we've understood what climate change is. All uh, right. It's the change effectively in climate. Very simple. It's the change in long term, um, long term weather effectively. Mm-hmm. So, why is climate change a problem? Why can't we just let it happen? Where it's going to be happening anyway, isn't it? With the end of an ice age. So, what is the issue? Greenhouse gases. You no, said that something that is related, but <laughs> <laughs> the carbon. Uh, <laughs> well, the issue is that. There's a lot of us and the seas come onto the land and then the countries get smaller. And where do we all go? Yeah. I mean, Atlantis. that is one of the issues. <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. That is, I wish. I wish. <clears throat> that is one of the issues. So effectively, we don't have the infrastructure um, or capabilities to deal with the climate that we're, that we're creating. I mean, for the past entirety of human history, mm. the climate's been pretty... It's been fairly consistent. Consistent. It's consistent enough that we've managed to build buildings and towns and cities and all of this to deal with the climate mm-hmm. that we've got now. If suddenly the seas jumped up and the temperature um, like skyrocketed, we wouldn't be able to deal with that. And neither would a lot of the no. wildlife. So obviously, yeah. um, a lot of a lot of animals would go extinct uh, because they wouldn't be able to deal with the change in temperature. Um, coral reefs, um, for one thing, are would be decimated. Isn't the Great Barrier <coughs> Reef declared dead now? I think it was de- declared dead a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a few years ago. <laughs> Just a picture of a doctor and his watch <laughs> holding the pulse of the reef. That was death, death, Time death of death. <laughs> you would need a large morgue for the Great Barrier <laughs> Reef. <laughs> uh, yeah, in March 2017, a journal, the journal Nature published a paper showing that the huge sections of an 800 kilometre stretch of the northern part of the reef had died. So That's most right. of it is dead. It's mostly dead. Mostly dead. That's sad. So, there's been a change in global surface temperature between uh, 1850 and the end of the 21st century. um, And that's likely to be um, higher than 1.5 degrees centigrade. Which doesn't sound like much, but that's average across across the entire Earth. Remember that um, just a a change in just 5 degrees um, on average between now and the last ice age was up to 22 degrees in some places. So a change of 1.5... Just from the fact that humans are here doing their yeah. thing, is a is a fair amount. Like we've we've done we've done a lot. Good on us for uh, yeah. changing the planet so much, but probably not for the best reasons. No. So if the current warming trend continues, temperatures will rise to uh, between three and five degrees above what they what they were in eighteen fifty by the end of the century. That is so That's quick. Going to be unbearable. Mm, it will that be unbearable so quick because well. there will be no bears because they won't they hibernate and they will especially die. Especially polar bears. Oh yeah, polar bears. <laughs> Goodbye. They're pretty much already gone. Yeah, it's a shame. So will we start seeing animals that live, say for example, will they start migrating more north over time as temperatures rise? I mean, presumably. I mean, ultimately, we've already seen changes in animal behavior. I mean, um, I mean, flowers will bloom earlier. Some insects mm. come out earlier. It's mm. it's really it's really affecting it's really affecting wildlife because such a quick change. They're not really geared up to evolution. Doesn't work that fast effectively you know so you can't yes it, 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 most animals can't cope with the change in temperature the only reason that we manage to is because we've built things that help us yeah. do it i think that it is important to 
uh, although that is true, absolutely, and 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 a, a large, large proportion of the Earth will um, of the of the species on the planet will die out as a result of if we don't manage to get a control of this. I think it's also important to just to know and to point out because I think it's something that's not really discussed much is that life on Earth will continue in some form. That's yeah. will just die, will be gone unless we can because we will have to unless we can very quickly create technology to deal with the new climate mm-hmm. um and probably rapidly decrease our population because of that because lots of people will die out in the in in that um process um life on earth will evolve eventually to uh, adjust, adjust to this to new it. climate and yeah, so- and yeah so I've actually written something about that uh, ah. a, little, a little bit a little bit later on. Um, I mean, I'll just I'll I'll let you know about it, about that now, because effectively we think of climate change as us killing the planet, which is yes not right. The planet we can't kill the Earth. We could try really hard, well, but we we yeah. can change the Earth to make it uninhabitable for us. Yeah, for for us and for a and lot of for things. a lot of other species. But bear in mind, uh, Chernobyl happened and everyone had to leave, and yet the. There's still there's still wildlife in Chernobyl. Still, things are still still dogs and stuff kicking about in Chernobyl. Things are still surviving. Life will uh, find life, a life way. Life finds a way, <laughs> as Jeff Goldblum put it so well in Jurassic Park. <laughs> life uh, finds a way, and it will. Uh, we won't kill the planet. We will just kill ourselves. Change it and kill a I, lot of a lot of other animals. And yeah, th- what I'm saying is that I'm not going to be telling you that you should care about climate change. I'm not saying that you should want to stop it. Because ultimately, who cares? Is us is, is us affecting the planet a negative thing? We think of ourselves mm. as being separate from other animals. You know, beavers changing the course of rivers, is that bad? It, it doesn't really matter yeah. whether you think it's good or bad. I'm not yeah. making a moral argument. I'm just saying that climate change, based on the based on the information we've got now, is almost certainly a thing that is happening that is due to us. And what you and choose to do, is what you choose to do with that information, is up to you. It's your own prerogative. Yeah. I don't really care. I mean, I, it's I, ultimately I do care. really a a really big testament to the idea. It's, it's it's we are essentially a species that um, has a non an unending desire for more. We have an unquenchable appetite, and that's what's led us to the world we're in today. Because we thought. 50 years ago that we would be working basically no time at all because technology would be so good that we'd have all the resources we need, all the food we need, and people would work a few hours a week and that was it. And it turned out not to be true at all because it didn't take into account the fact that humans are bloody greedy and they just want more and more and more and never satisfied. And ultimately, at some point, we're going to have to make the decision whether we want to be determined by our genes or by our brains and our ability to make decisions that are intelligent and look at data because right now, whilst we are continuing to use more than we need to survive and to be content, not happy, content, we are siding with our genes because our genes are clearly uh, have this unquenchable appetite. Mm. And if we can actually start paying attention to stuff and changing our behavior and sort of growing more conscious of our behavior, um, then we will hopefully overcome our genes and that's what's so incredible about humans that separates us from other animals is we have the ability to overcome our genes so we really need to start exercising that yeah i think i I agree with you there i mean the one thing i would say is uh, you're saying that humans are inherently greedy and i don't disagree with you but i would say that life like life itself is inherently greedy the issue is that we've just gotten to a point where we are able to we don't have to fight to survive We're, we're out of the kind of survival phase of life and we're up to the point of comfort okay we can make it so that all of our needs are met everything that we could possibly want is just available to us shelter food and water is available to most people exactly and food to the point of becoming a lot of people food to the point of being ill i mean if you if you feed a dog 10 times a day the dog is going to eat 10 times a day until it physically can't and that dog is going to die from being overweight and humans are the same except we think of ourselves as being smarter than that yeah (laughs) yeah above all that what i mean by humans are inherently greedy i I agree with you that life is generally will will take what it can get what i mean is humans are different as far as we suppose humans are different because we have the ability to be self-reflective and to think upon our own greediness and if we think upon our own greediness and think of ourselves as separate to the animal kingdom and then don't do anything about that information then we're idiots yeah so yes. oh, ab- absolutely yeah, true so uh just more reasons that w- why we should care about climate change in in or at least 
why we should recognize it as something that is happening that will damage yeah. um, ecosystems. So the world's going to get warmer. Uh, water is going to evaporate. That's going to mean there's more moisture in the air, which is going to mean more rainfall Humidity. in some areas. Um, and some places it's going to snow a lot more. Um, obviously, Weird. that yeah, but which could which could um, lead to flooding, which could uh, overwater certain crops. It's it's a lot more than what you think it will be. Um, it also means that there's a risk of droughts inland. So yeah. it, the thing, the, the reason that we stopped calling it global warming and started uh, referring to it as climate change is, for one thing, it's not necessarily going to get warmer. Um, yeah. it, it's so warm everywhere, and it's not going to be warmer all the time. But also, it doesn't mean that it's going to be um, raining across the world. It means that yeah. some areas are going to be in complete drought. Some areas are going to be um, flooding, yeah, flooding, storms, and stuff. Um, there's going to be like effectively there's going to be a lot of difference um across the world as there already is with um local climates it's so this is an issue that's being caused disproportionately by richer countries and is affecting poorer countries more mm -hmm. because obviously they don't have the money or the infrastructure to deal with these problems yeah that are being created so or to create the problems in the first place <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it takes a lot of money to it takes a lot of money to make the, make those problems but it takes more money to, to, to fix get them out of them yeah um plant and animals are gonna plants and animals are gonna go uh extinct as we've said um the they already are aren't they yeah they've started going it's like uh, tens of thousands a year i think but we don't i mean we don't really notice it we, we know we it's bigger because it, it's a lot of species it's we know like, it's bigger things more and yeah i mean ultimately you, you'd notice if you'd, people would be worried if say lions went extinct because we know what a lion is but if one no one cares when it's like one specific species of butterfly that one weird extinct. shrew yeah yeah <laughs> a single shrew just yeah. died <laughs> so yeah it's an issue the, the world health organization um warned that the health of people could be affected because um malaria could increase waterborne waterborne diseases could increase and malnutrition mm -hmm. because don't forget we eat plants and even if you eat meat meat eats plants everything goes back <laughs> to everything plants. comes from plants yeah everything all of the energy that we have in the world comes from the sun and goes directly into into plants yeah. into into life Except for fungus, unless you eat mushrooms, maybe. But that's that's a whole other kettle of fish we Still won't fungus. get into. Oh, really? They don't use the sun? Oh, no, they will. No, well, they, they okay. The so the well, yeah, but the energy comes from the sun, and then so yeah. how? Okay, so how mushrooms work is that they basically feed on um dying stuff. Well, actually, no, but it would that, always be. Oh, no, it's always plants. Stuff that did it use always the sun. comes back to plants. Yes, it yeah. always has to come yeah. back to plants, or you know, bacteria, whatever. Um, it it comes from the sun, goes into something, and all of our all of our food comes from plants so weird so if our crops can't handle the change in climate then we're done that like that's it who, who how can't are we gonna eat. we can't feed people if we don't have something can't to eat. feed them animals can't eat so it's it's a it's a really big issue and it's going to affect everyone it's going to make life harder um and okay yeah some people might benefit from it slightly if you're in a colder region yeah. the temperature is going to go up and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be pretty mild. It's if you're in somewhere be, like the UK, it's like okay, cool. <laughs> we got Spain temperatures won't be, now. Won't be too bad too quickly. Yeah, be but right. bear in mind we're we're a tiny little island. But somewhere like Australia is already yeah, Australia's gonna be feeling it. I mean, they've just had the bushfires earlier this year. Exactly, California oh, is uh, California as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Australia's <laughs> not had a good year. Is it, they really haven't had they? No, and they've also got all the animals there that want to kill them. Yeah, but well, hopefully some of them will die off at least. <laughs> God, Ray. <laughs> It would be good for the Australians. <laughs> no, so uh, this is, uh, there's also an issue with um, more acid um, in the oceans. The ocean's becoming more acidic, more acid rain, um, coastal erosion, rising sea levels, erratic rainfall, droughts, heat waves, all of this kind of stuff. Yeah. Everything is going to be affected. And we're not really doing, we're not really doing too much about it, in my opinion. I, I feel like if the entire, if the entire world is going to very quickly have to shift its way of life just to deal with the way that we're doing things now. We should probably either be working to deal with those changes mm. or stop those changes stop so we have them. more time to deal with them. Yeah, Because ultimately, we're in a position right now where if we stopped right now and made it net, uh, our carbon emissions net zero right now, we're mm. still on track to completely change the way that, that we're living. In the next 10 years, isn't it? I, I mean, yeah. I mean, the well, well, I don't know what it is. it's like past the point of no return. I mean, there's we keep on we keep we keep on shifting. We keep the on going post. past the point, the point of no of return. return. No, I've also noticed that we set it at one degree um, increase, yeah, and then we set 5. it at one point five. Now it's um, it two. We need we're, we're trying to stick to one point five. Yeah, but the thing is that this 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 um global 
global average increase of 1.5 isn't like, hit 1.5, it's all gonna be fine. It, it means if we hit 1.5, we might not absolutely kill everyone entirely. Yeah. It, yeah. It, we still should be, be aiming to, to be less than 1.5. 1.5 is like a D, you know? Or it's like a C minus, like you, you just got there, but just don't be passed. aiming for the C. <laughs> yeah. If anything, it's more of a C plus because there'll be more of it. Ha 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 ha, that's a joke about our planet dying. <laughs> <laughs> rising sea levels I, and like i said we we think of it as us killing the planet but ultimately it's just us killing ourselves uh, the planet will survive earth will continue spinning on it's weird but i can take some comfort in that fact that the earth will just carry on because a lot of the time a lot of people talk about it as if it's earth dying and we're gonna die with the earth but the earth is gonna carry on i love that though it's very human it's very it's selfish like, i'm still scared for humans and other animals but it's like There'll be more life afterwards, which I, I can take some comfort in. I just think it's, it's nice, James, because that means you ha you don't necessarily have all of your identity invested in being a human. You're not that fussed about the human genome going out, as yeah, long as there yeah. are still things to live and exist. Yeah. I just I just think it does it. I kind of. That's not to say overall, we should carry on. No, it's no, not at all to say we should carry on. I kind of think overall, <laughs> who cares? You know, we okay. We kill. Yeah, let's say this climate nonsense. Let's say we knock out ninety nine percent of the species on the on the on the face of this planet, mm. and one of those one of those species that we kill is ourselves. What happens if there's one? If even if there's one percent of life we're not around to make it worse, yeah, but even if there's one percent <laughs> of life left, it's probably yeah. going to get back to a point where it's where yeah. it's pretty abundant. I mean, yeah. ultimately, the fact the fact that we think that. If we die off, the universe the ends. Well, the fact, yeah, the fact that we think if we die off, we've killed the planet and yeah. life won't life won't be able to recover. It. Man, life will recover. Come it just on. won't be us. Yeah, it just won't be us. We are not the center of the universe, and ultimately, we humans have such an ego, don't they? We really do. It. Do you know how difficult <laughs> it? It would be incredibly difficult for us to kill off all life on the planet, even if we nuked. Yeah. Like every every like every part of the surface, there'll be something that's like tardigrades. There's and still going to be bacteria. There's still going to be ba bacteria down the bottom bacteria, of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. But there's still going to be there's still going to be life somewhere. And unless we wanted to absolutely destroy all life on the planet, mm -hmm. we're not going to do it by like we can't mm -hmm. do it by accident. We can we we wouldn't even be able to do it on purpose. If we tried to do it on purpose, it'd be hard. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it, it's not, it's not killing the planet. That's not that's not the fight you should be fighting. It's Let's try and let's try and the preserve. The earth is fine. Let's just try and save the animals and save ourselves. Let's let's just try and preserve our way of yeah. life. Is my is my point. That's yeah. that's what we're trying yeah. to do. So I'm going to tell you now about just the observations that we've made. So not how we give think us it's the data. Yeah, but not how we think it's happening. Just what we've noticed about the world, which has led us to maybe think, hey, climate might be changing. So first off, the world is just getting warmer. If you take the average uh, temperature, which is calculated from uh, 1951 to 1980 land surface temperature data, um, since uh, you know, since the Industrial Revolution, the the world has been getting warmer. I've actually got a graph here that uh, that I'll show you. The world so, has been getting warmer. So even just looking at this graph, you can so see so it goes all the way back to 1800 up to now, and yeah, this is just a steady increase, isn't it? You want to see that? Look, can you see that? Oh, even yes. like even just looking I there. I conclude that the world has been getting warmer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> look, I wouldn't just trust Nobel one. I, I wouldn't just trust one graph, but it's this. This graph is a pretty good. Um, this is a BBC graph. Um, this graph is pretty good at showing just the rate of increase in average surface temperature since um, the 1800s. And oh boy. Is it is it stark? We're we're getting up to we're getting up to that one point five mark pretty pretty quickly. Question: uh, Yes, how do we know the average surface temperature in eighteen hundred? Uh, I think it's because we started recording temperatures in eighteen eighty. Right. So that's when that's when they all go back to. And how how accurate are they? I don't have the data on that. I'm afraid, but okay. accurate enough that we're happy to use them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool, I trust you. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I would love if actually the, the climate hasn't been changing. They were just really, really inaccurate, and we've just gotten better at a <laughs> at actually, actually the, getting the right one. Well, that's the um, that's the uh, the reason I asked that is because that's the assertion about the speed of light is that we have. If you look at like the historic, like some historical data suggests that the speed of light has been changing over time, and the explanation given is that we weren't measuring it accurately enough and that somehow that has created the the 
idea that it has been increasing but actually it's just that we weren't measuring it accurately enough mm. and so we I were trying if... to use a stopwatch that was the issue it's very this quick true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh <sighs> yeah I, I i mean look this this change in temperature probably it's probably not due to the increased in, like information um what is it the increase in temperature is probably not due to um the accuracy of our measurements and i would say that purely based on the fact that since um in the 20th century it's jumped up yes like we can mm -hmm. even through even um without our technology advancing to the point of being so much better at recording it it's 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 going it seems to be going up at a yeah, different yeah, rate yeah. you know yeah no i don't i don't <laughs> doubt that i just am trying to guess the questions people may have yeah go if they are. guess away so yeah the world is about one degree celsius warmer um than before the basically the industrial revolution which is a also fair bit. the industrial revolution or, or wide widespread industrialization yeah um and that's from the world meteorological yeah the world meteorological organization uh so the 20 warmest years on record all happened can you guess when? In the last 20 years? The last 22 years. Oh, Two wow. of them were okay. Yep, that's it. I was Cl nice. <laughs> Climate change debunked. Um, but the years 2015 to 2018 made up the top four. I I'm pretty sure this is from 2019, by the way. So uh, Okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah, so... You notice every year on the weather, on the news, they're always like, wow, it's been the hottest summer on record. There's always a news article that's like, like... wow. <laughs> yeah, there is always a news article that's like, hottest summer on record. And everyone's like, woo, isn't Ooh, that great? And I'm like, our right. planet is dying. Yeah. This is bad. It, are you not I seeing feel, the trend? What's so interesting about this, though, is that it does... like the. I think part of the reason why people doubt this stuff is because it just feels implausible that us tiny little things could have an impact on something so gigantic. It's just... And that's not that's not to say that it's not happening. It's just so mind-boggling that we have reached that level of power as a species in such a short amount of time. Mm. Yeah, I think, I mean, one of those one of those things is that we started messing with the very delicate balance that um, I say delicate delicate on the scale that it exists. Um, the very delicate balance that nature has in its cycles, um, mm. like the carbon cycle, we, we've we've managed to mess with that mm, enough to destabilize it and yes. set it running like a freight train. It is absolutely mad to me that we looked at this thing that basically every biological process for all time has been trying to bury oil as deep as possible. And we went, let's put it in the air. Well, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say <laughs> it's been trying to bury it. It's just, it has just it, been happening. Sure. I'm not, no, I, I don't no, mean I, to ac I, I assign a personality to nature. I just mean that the process of a stable planet buries oil as a waste product low down very far down and we go like yeah! let's suck it up <laughs> let's just let's just take it all out right now do you that, have do you know how that the car doesn't belong there <laughs> do you know how the carbon cycle just releases carbon slowly back into the atmosphere so it's a stable level yeah why don't well, we just put it all in at once yeah, let's see what happens not? man yeah no not not really the best <laughs> so across the globe the average sea level increased by 3.6 millimeters per year between 2005 and 2015. Mm. Doesn't sound like much, but... But it's the whole world. It's the whole... That's over the whole world. Think Three about point, that how, much. Curry, how do they know that the rulers aren't getting smaller? Oh. Ah. <laughs> that's true. I got you there. <laughs> You're guessing questions people might have. <laughs> that is true. The rulers could be getting smaller. Yeah. Um, I think the rulers actually expand in water, though, so... It's, ah. it's probably it's probably a lot more than 3.6 millimeters Ooh. come on scientists i'm just picturing <laughs> <laughs> every beach in the world with a scientist every couple of meters just holding a little ruler oh it's getting the oh like, that's the thing the ocean's level the ocean levels will rise and fall yeah. constantly because it's called the tide but um no realistically it's <laughs> realistically on, on, average, though, on average it is it is getting higher the Tide sounds like a shitty 1990s pop band. Boy well, band. I'd listen to it. Why don't we make a boy band called The Tide? The Tide. The Tide. <laughs> the <dream is> psychic. <clears throat> so this change is mostly caused because water increases in volume as it heats up. Um, but also um, ice melts when it gets warm. It does do that. And that makes it into water, which I will make the it. sea levels that rise. Happens. Really, you don't ice believe it? No, ice and water are different things, man. Okay, here's okay. Here's an experiment you can do at home. I can't believe you work for the Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here, here's an experiment you can do at home. Okay, go into your freezer, chip off a block of ice, 
and um, put it in the put, microwave. Put it. <laughs> <laughs> Might turn into steam there. Actually, <laughs> well, just leave Maybe it. Just leave it out. Just leave it in a bowl for a bit. Mm. Okay. Mm. It's gonna turn into water. It will. Yeah, leave it overnight. It's incredible. How does it do that? Mad. I've no idea how. It just happens. It's like a magician. But you put it in, you put that water in the freezer. It's like turn when into a caterpillar ice. turns into a butterfly. It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, but then the the butterfly turns back into a caterpillar when you put it when you make it cold. Yes, that's true. We yeah. put it in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Another experiment. Find a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> take it out the freezer and watch it become a butterfly so <laughs> this is going so slowly it's fine so is the rise in the sea level no Actually, no, it's I mean, going no it's going quite quickly, quickly. <laughs> it's the point of what i just said <laughs> so yeah the sea levels are rising the temperature is getting hotter and also satellites uh show that there's been a dramatic decline in arctic sea ice since 1979 the Greenland ice sheet has also experienced um, record melting in recent years. Um, the West Antarctic ice sheet is also losing mass, um, and East Antarctica may have also started to lose mass as well. So all of the ice sheets, the, uh, I mean, okay, the ice sheets are losing mass, effectively. Um, Share and- with us your weight loss secret, Antarctica. <laughs> Jenny Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Just get rid of all that water weight in it. Put the Antarctic ice sheet on the biggest loser. <laughs> You can also see the change in plants flowering and fruiting earlier than they normally would and animals changing territory because it's the temperature changing. So they need to mm. change where they live. Um, unfortunately for polar bears, <laughs> they're not got many they're places to go. Out places to live, aren't they? They really are, aren't they? Uh, we'll just we'll bring them to, bring them to live them in, in the zoos. Freezer. Yeah, just get really big freezers. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> freezers actually contribute a lot of the... To heating Un- uh, like, ironically they actually oh, heat the world up yeah because yeah. they spit out hot air but then if you put a freezer yeah. inside of a freezer <gasps> right wow four thousand right? iq cory there we go <laughs> problem Damn. solved so i remember that when they asked us that in uh in school they were like well if you opened a freezer door and you left the door open and then you left the room would the room get colder or warmer and everyone was like colder and they were like no and we were like, wow. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> Third eye activated. So I'm going to be telling you about Jakobshan, which is um, a Greenland glacier. Now, it's the biggest glacier in Greenland, and it's actually growing, which is good, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, so climate change can't be happening because oh, no, this one be glacier oh, is anyway. growing. Yeah, this is what cl- in the episode. This is what climate deniers will show you if you if they want to try and convince you. And actually, um, if you, if you watch this video by H bomber guy, he goes quite in depth into this. Um, there'll be a link in the description as well. So he points out also that some climate deniers will emit information from graphs. Mm -hmm. So for instance, they'll show that, uh, for example, a glacier has increased, um, in mass over, over a certain period of time on the graph. But actually, Mm -hmm. if you look at the whole graph, uh, it's been on a decrease because glaciers increase every winter when it gets colder. Oh, so because it's gone of course down they do. a lot, but it's if you look just over a period come, of years, if you, yeah. not, not even if if you look over a period of years, it's it gets it's going it, it goes right. down. So in the case of Jakobshan, it is actually increasing slightly in mass, but Weird. the other parts of the ice sheet, um, that the glacier make that um, but the other parts of the ice sheet uh, that the glacier kind of belongs to, mm-hmm. are decreasing in mass at a higher rate right. than that is increasing in mass. So right. d- despite despite the fact that it, it looks like it's an increase, if you look at the bigger picture, it is still a net loss of ice mass. Yeah, so d- make right. sure, if someone tells you, oh, global warming can't be happening oh, because the temperature is getting lower in this place or the, the ice sheets are increasing just, in this it's place. It's just one data point. Yeah, you need to look across the whole world. You need to look globally. It's in this. It's the same thing as saying, oh, well, it was a really warm day. It was a really cool... Mm, it's the same thing as saying, oh, well, it was a really cold day today. Therefore, global warming not happening. We had a week of rain a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah, we did, didn't we? Climate change. Who? Who? It'll never be sunny again. No, never. Except today. And and that's the thing. Um, NASA researchers say that climate change isn't a straight line. Because, of course, it's not. There's fluctuations um, throughout the year. There can be mm-hmm. There can be different fluctuations. So just because there's one data point that seems to be far out from... The rest of them that doesn't mean that it's not happening because the overall average is still an increase in global temperature and a decrease in ice sheet mass yeah so yeah i mean and also ice sheets melting um even if one of them is growing ice sheets melting in and of itself exacerbates the problem do you do either of you know why that might be 
Ice sheets melting exacerbates the problem. Yeah, so if the more ice sheets melt, the faster yeah. global warming happens. Uh, is that because there's more water available in the atmosphere to reflect sunlight back to Earth? Uh, I think that's part of it, but the, the, main, the main thing is that there's carbon... Um, there's carbon trapped in the ice. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you melt the ice, the carbon gets released, which goes into the atmosphere, yeah, which then increases before. global warming. So it, like, that's what I mean when I, when I said it was a kind of a runaway freight train. As soon as you start this happening, mm -hmm. it's just going to keep itself keep going. going. Uh, so, I mean, okay, for a long time, uh, the oceans basically have been sucking at carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and then releasing it again, um, kind of slowly, like like breathing in and out. Yeah. So the ocean takes up carbon dioxide through um, photosynthesis from phytoplankton, which are basically um, like tiny little creatures that have got um, the same the same ability to make energy from sunlight that plants do. Hmm. Um, and then also carbon dioxide just dissolves in, in water. So it will dissolve in water and it will be trapped in the water there. Um, and then it reacts with seawater, which creates carbonic acid, which releases hydrogen ions, which combine with the carbonate in seawater to form bicarbonate which doesn't escape the ocean very easily. So basically, carbon dioxide gets trapped in, uh, what well, comes into, gets dissolved in water in the ocean and gets turned into a different form of carbon that just doesn't, doesn't leave the seawater quite as easily as carbon, um, carbon dioxide would. So it does kind of suck up um, the oceans. They do kind of suck up some of, mm -hmm. some of the carbon. But we burn fossil fuels. So the carbon in the atmosphere yeah. goes up. And then the ocean absorbs more car carbon dioxide to stay in balance because they, it... It's kind of like, um, it's kind of almost like osmosis. Do you know how osmosis happens where water will go through a membrane so that they're mm. at the equal concentrations? Equal on both sides. Yeah, yeah. like an equal concentration. Yeah. You want, that's what the ocean and the and the atmosphere want to do. They want, there's a set they kind of level. With each other, yeah. yeah, there's a set okay. balance that they want to be in. So if you put more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, the ocean is going to try and suck up more of it so that mm -hmm. they're back in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing then that is that then bad for ocean life, having more carbon dioxide in the water? Yes, carbon dioxide is an acid. Oh, oh come yeah. on. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? This is great. So, um, <laughs> can't catch so, a break. We really can. Uh, so there is more carbon dioxide in the seawater, which makes it more acidic, which um, it lowers its pH, um, and it means that it's going to affect some sea life as well. Uh, and then when the temperature rises, the carbon dioxide starts to leave uh, the water. It get it isn't it's undissolved in the same way that, you know, um, a warm can, a warm, like say, can of Coke. Yeah. Is going to be flatter than a cold can of Coke. Yes. Yeah. So the carbonate, which is the stuff in the water that's that's it, it's diff it, it's quite difficult for it to leave um, and get back into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The carbonate gets used up and then it gets um, basically restocked by um deeper waters which have got a lot of carbonate dissolved in them which they get from kind of limestone and other rocks and then at the center of the ocean um there are currents that are driven by the wind and those have colder waters and they bring fresh carbonate to the surface and then the new water takes more carbon to match the atmosphere and then the old wa water carries the carbon it's taken into the ocean so there's kind of a cycle of carbon through the water that um that stays in balance and means that the atmosphere's got the right amount of carbon, yep. the ocean's got the right amount of carbon, and it's and it's cycled through, so there's not too much in the atmosphere at one point or mm -hmm. too much in the ocean. Mm -hmm. But the warmer this <laughs> the warmer the water on the surface becomes, the harder it is for the winds to mix the, the surface layers with the deeper layers. And so then the ocean set settles into layers um with different kind of concentrations of car ah. uh, with carbon. So then there's not there's not like um so when there's not mixing the surface water starts to saturate with carbon dioxide to the point where it can't dissolve any more. So any of the carbon dioxide that's released into the atmosphere at that point is kind of stuck in the atmosphere and the, the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere goes up. Does, does that all make sense? Yeah, it does. Yes, somewhat, yes. Which, uh, basically, basically to run over it, there's different types of carbon in the water and increasing the temperature throws off that balance mm -hmm. so that the, yeah. the, the water can't take in any more carbon and it gets stuck in the atmosphere. And on top of that, it makes the water less um, less good for fish to live in by making it more acidic. Acidic, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's there, There's many prongs to this problem. It's not just quite as simple as... It's like a whack-a-mole where you've, if, if you can fix one problem, there's still like a, a whole other problems that are popping up. It, exactly. I mean, it's not quite as simple as burn coal, carbon, air, bad. You know, mm. there's there's a lot... It's, it's not quite... That's the thing. It's not quite as simple as if we stop using fossil fuels. 
because we've already started this problem. Yeah. So also, um, on, on top of this, this water is worse for the animals that put more carbon dioxide in the water. So it stops taking up carbon dioxide from photosynthesis, which again throws off the balance um, and messes up. And ozone, do you know the ozone layer? Yeah. That's a part of our atmosphere. Um, that naturally warms up the atmosphere and um, because it captures radiation from the sun and then mm -hmm. emits it, um, emits it there. If you get rid of the ozone, you've got cooling in the upper atmosphere. Um, and that big difference between the upper atmosphere and the lower atmosphere causes really strong winds around Antarctica. And then there's kind of uneven warming in different parts of the Southern hemisphere. And that means that there's, <laughs> that means that there's a big temperature difference and stronger winds, which means that carbon goes from the deep water, which is full of carbon. It's got a lot of carbon in it into the atmosphere. So basically those strong winds around Ant Antarctica mix up the water a lot. So the yeah. deep water, which has got a lot of carbon in it, comes to the surface and starts spitting out the carbon into the atmosphere. Basically, every Everything, single... it's... Yeah. It sounds, it sounds complicated, and, it, and that's because it is. I, I could simplify it down to the really simple burn yeah, carbon goes you in can the simplify air. simplify it, but explaining it like that really shows how it is just a self... Self-fulfilling, that's the wrong word. It's like a machine that runs itself once you set it going. Yeah, it's almost like a, a perpetual motion device. Yeah. In in that sense. Yeah. And if you're finding this difficult to understand, don't worry. It we is, all are. <laughs> it is really difficult to understand. <laughs> and I, I'm, gonna, I'm doing my best to simplify it without losing the details of the fact that th there are lots of ways that carbon gets into the atmosphere and it's not just using fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. um, as, soon as, you start, as soon as you start doing it, it, it makes the problem worse. So... There's also something called a carbon bomb. That doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good, but it's no. not quite as bad as what, what it's not quite as bad as what it sounds. It's a lot slower than a bomb would be, but it's still it's still about <laughs> as destructive. Uh, so you guys so don't time to run away is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> you can't run. Away, I mean, you're stuck on the planet. You can't run away from the planet for now. <laughs> um, do you guys know what permafrost is? No. Luke, do you know Luke? Uh, no. Okay, so I've heard of it. <laughs> I have, I'm aware of its existence. I'm aware of that word. So permafrost is any ground that just stays completely frozen for at least two years straight. Um, it's basically what it sounds like, permafrost, permanently mm. frozen ground. Um, so if that starts melting, what's going to happen is that that stored up a lot of carbon from things dying. So there's a lot of carbon in your body, your carbon-based life form. When you yeah. die, um, usually that gets put back into the carbon cycle mm -hmm. but in the case of uh, animals that are dying in areas with permafrost they're kind of frozen and that doesn't get back into the cycle quite as easily so it's it's trapped in the permafrost right yeah so which is a good thing at the moment it, at the moment it's a good thing because yes. i mean that that's again that's in balance the but as we mm -hmm. melt those areas all of that is frozen gonna get carbon from over the thousands and thousands of years is going to be released it's going to come out yeah really quickly so yeah, uh, obviously plants take up CO2 in photosynthesis. So that's that's the, some of that is going to be taken up by plants. Um, and plants, trees, all yeah. the trees that we're cutting down currently. Yeah, yeah those ones. <laughs> yeah, those, those trees. Um, yeah, so some of that will be taken up by those plants, but not enough. Um, <laughs> basically, the Arctic is going to get a, a lot greener, yeah. but um, it's not going to get a lot better. Um, if you if you start thawing the ice in the Arctic, it's gonna change the landscape hugely and really quickly as well. So, mm. um, so how it how it works is that there's permafrost kind of below a layer of active sort of earth. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a bit of say like soil and dirt, and then there's permafrost below that. Yep. If the permafrost below the soil and dirt melts, then that soil and dirt falls down into that hole that was left. Right. And then you get sort of like ponds and lakes, and then you can also get landslides, um, that, and it oh, turns God. up old soil, and all of that can happen um, really, really quickly. quickly. And it creates more moisture, which makes more, which makes thawing happen faster. And on top of that, warming that ground exposes carbon-rich peatlands that have mm -hmm. been locked, basically frozen for thousands of years. So, melting the permafrost it, it, in lots of ways. Will release carbon into the atmosphere. Yeah. It's it's a big it's a big it's a big problem, and this is stuff that like this is stuff that I didn't I wasn't aware of until I started researching it, mm -hmm. because I mean, basically all we're told is that we're using fossil fuels and that's getting into the atmosphere. We're not really told. Yeah, it's it's really simplified, isn't it? Because the, 
I mean, you're going through them all. There's so many ways that we're releasing carbon into the atmosphere and carbon is getting released into the atmosphere that it's just too much for it's too much for people to comprehend. Maybe not to comprehend, but um, there's too many issues with it to be able to give them all equal like, you know, time in the limelight. Yeah, absolutely. I just think that, uh, like, I understand why it's simplified. I just think that when it's simplified to that degree, people think it's much less of a problem yeah, than exactly. it actually is. And it's just a case of, oh, well, we just use fossil fuels until they're done. And then we, that's it. The problem solved. We're not putting more stuff in the atmosphere. But the, the issue is that as soon as we start doing this, we, we set that, we set that train in motion and yeah. it's now a case of trying to limit the damage. We can't catch it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the, why we think it's happening like, rather than how I've, I've touched on that a little bit, but I mm-hmm. want to go into now the greenhouse effect which you both will have heard of. Yeah. Do you guys do you want, want to give me a little explanation of the greenhouse effect? So carbon dioxide uh, reflects sunlight that would normally bounce off of the surface of the Earth and go back into space, and it reflects it back down to Earth again, meaning that the radiation that comes oh, from the sun can't yeah. leave, and more is delivered from the sun, and the stuff that came an hour ago, a day ago, a week ago is still bouncing so around. So it's the getting atmosphere. trapped in the atmosphere. Yeah. 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 Well, so it's yeah how a greenhouse so, works. Kind of, yeah. well, no, it's not how a greenhouse works. But um, what? <laughs> I'll, I'll get I'll, I'll get to that. That was kind of you had most of the parts there. That is the general understanding of the greenhouse effect. Um, so the greenhouse effect is effectively um, the warming of the surface of the Earth and mm-hmm. the lowest level of the atmosphere caused by not just carbon dioxide, um, water vapor, methane, and other gases. So again, you've got your greenhouse gases. So there's carbon yeah. dioxide is one of them. Uh, but yeah, methane um, and uh, nitrous oxide and fluorinated gases are other ones um so basically it let the atmosphere lets most of the visible light from the sun pass through um and get to the earth's surface and as the earth's surface is heated by sunlight it radiates part of the energy back as uh, infrared radiation so the earth's surface takes in visible light and then spits out lower energy light yeah because it's taken in some of that energy for itself uh, and the atmosphere, generally, what it will do is reflect some of that light that the Earth has spat out back at it, mm-hmm. um, and then it will let um, some of the other stuff pass through. So it's not all stuck in. It's not all stuck in, but some of those gases are really good at reflecting that energy back. Now the issue is that we even increase. Do they reflect it back, or do they absorb it and then re- and then re-emit it? Yeah, they absorb it and re-emit it. Okay. So ultimately, um, what happens when you increase? the concentration of those gases in the air is that you've got um, an increase in the amount of that energy that is then reflected back towards the Earth's surface. Um, the way that the the way that a greenhouse works is actually by um, trapping warmed air. Um, so it lets, it lets visible light through, but traps warmed air inside the greenhouse. So it's slightly different. I see where it gets the name from, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... It, it's not exactly the same, but it's yeah. it's not exactly the same. It's similar enough. It, it technically they're not the same, but it's it's an interesting fact to know. It'll it'll win you a few pub quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but um, so without the heating caused by the greenhouse effect, and don't get me wrong, we need the greenhouse effect to survive. Otherwise, the planet would be far too cold. Without the heating from the greenhouse effect, the Earth's average surface would be about negative eighteen degrees Celsius. <laughs> really? Yeah. There's a yeah. It, it heats us up a so lot. So we need it, but it's. Being put not into that overdrive. Much. Yeah, yeah, not uh, that much. It, we need it Too in a much. balance. Okay, like for instance, you need to have sugar. Yeah. You know, but too much gives too you much. diabetes. I mean, you, we need it's a lot moderation. of things. Yeah, exactly. It is all about moderation. Like, you know, um, Venus, for example, has a lot of carbon dioxide in the. Venus, for example, has a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, so obviously the greenhouse effect is really strong there, mm-hmm. which means that the surface temperature on Venus can get to be as high as 450 degrees centigrade. <gasps> mm, desirable. Ooh. Through the greenhouse effect, bear in mind. And being closer to the sun, but yeah. Yes, but G- Venus has got a hotter surface temperature than Mercury, and Mercury is closer Mercury. to the sun <gasps> than Venus. Yeah. Whoa. Did you not yeah. know that? No. Well, no. <laughs> so Venus, yeah, Venus, the second closest planet to the sun, is actually hotter than the closest planet to the sun, through its atmosphere through the greenhouse effect um and again as i said the greenhouse effect happens naturally but we've just increased it through releasing more um of these greenhouse gases into the air Uh, basically from the start of the industrial revolution um through to the end of the 20th century Mm -hmm. the car the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere increased by roughly 30 (gasps) percent 
<gasps> and then the amount of methane in the atmosphere more than doubled. That is mad. That's disgusting. Yeah. I All mean, those farts. <laughs> That is right, true. We need to stop farting. That's it. It's actually cows um, we belching. Stop farting. I mean, just stop Cow- breathing. Yeah. yeah. Both ends. Just tie yeah. them up. Yeah. Human centipede had it right. You take three people, right? And then you've only got two no. holes instead of the usual six. No. Cuts it down to go. a third. Cows, no. cows produce 150 billion gallons of oh, methane yeah. per day. <laughs> One cow produces 150 <laughs> billion. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, cows are really bad for it. I, I go into that a little bit later as the as kind of the causes of these gases. But um, just to go over the greenhouse gases, you've got carbon dioxide, um, which mostly comes through burning fossil fuels, you know, coal, natural gas, and oil, mm-hmm. um, through solid waste um, from trees and other biological materials, and then also uh, from uh, chemical reactions, like making cement, for example. Um, and then it's removed from the atmosphere when it's absorbed by plants as um, part of photosynthesis Mm -hmm. methane uh, is emitted when you transport a coal and natural gas and oil um and it's also from livestock like cows um and then the decay of organic waste um in landfills okay so like uh, i mean any kind of i mean even um your your, your farts are methane you know what i mean so any of that kind of farts yeah any of that kind of waste that's where methane comes from You've got nitrous oxide emitted during agricultural and industrial activities, uh, burning fossil fuels and solid waste, which is, I think, like feces, <laughs> um, as well as during the treatment of wastewater. So those come out there. And then fluorinated gases, you've got your hydrofluorocarbons, your perfluorocarbons, sulfur hexafluoride, and nitrogen trifluoride. Um, those are all synthetic, really powerful greenhouse gases that come from a lot of industrial processes. Um, we actually, I don't know if you remember, um, we... Um, See, do you remember CFCs and HFCs? Yes. See, no. I remember what these are because we did a play on them when I was in primary school because yeah. we wanted to stop. Wait, we wanted what, to st- what are they? We wanted to stop using CFCs. So effectively, they're hydrofluorocarbons and um, chlorofluor- no. hydrofluorocarbons and chlorofluorocarbons. Um, they're they're basically they're emitted in smaller quantities than the other one because we've yeah. limited the amount that we that right. we use them. They used to be in um, aerosols. Oh yeah. So well, they're not in aerosols at all now. Um, I think they've been. That's I, pretty good. I think they've been removed a lot. I don't know exactly. I mean, if you can find. So out. I use roll-on deodorant specifically because I think it's still bad. Oh, I mean, the, it's still it'll still be bad to use an aerosol uh, yeah. overall. But I don't think I don't think we're allowed to use HFCs and CFCs. At least that's what the play I did in primary school said. That was what it was all about. Yeah, it says. Um, yeah, in the United States, they now use propellants rather than CFCs. Mm. Oh yeah, I just found that as well. Good. But still ha- use HFCs. Uh, okay. HFCs still exist. CFCs, we've tried to phase out then. Mm. And they use other compressed gases like nitrous oxide. Good. <laughs> but to be fair, HFCs and CFCs are, f- like, they are far, far worse. worse. Um, they're, they've got, uh, they're, they're much worse for the atmosphere. Um, so basically, the effect of each of those gases um, are depending on a few factors. How much is in the atmosphere? So that's mm-hmm. um, concentration um, of, of it in the atmosphere. M- obviously, more emissions mean a higher concentration, which means um, a more of a greenhouse effect. Um, the second factor is how long they stay in the atmosphere. So all of the gases can stay in the, in the atmosphere for different lengths of time. So um, that's ranging from a few years to thousands of years. Shh. Methane um, doesn't stay in for as long as carbon dioxide, but it has more of an right. effect. Where does it go? What do you mean? Where does it go? It can escape to space, space, or it can es- it, it can goes get into back. Space. Um, so, okay, I assume so. No, I mean no. <laughs> it can get back into the it can get back into the carbon cycle. Right, but does any of it escape to space? I assume some of the atmosphere escapes to space. Wow, I'm pretty no. Actually, I, do you know what the reason? That, when you ask questions like this, and I say it escapes to space, no, it doesn't. It's because I remember reading somewhere that that happens, but I I never want to say anything. Don't know um, you read it. Yeah, I never want to say anything unless I've sourced it. Um, it does happen, yeah. It does happen. Atmospheric space. But I'm pretty sure... Atmospheric escape. I'm pretty sure it's because the... the either... Um, the, uh, I'm pretty sure it's because they um, get back into the carbon cycle some other way. Earth loses hundreds of tons of atmosphere to space every day. But how do we get it back? I want it. We need it. Well, <laughs> yeah. Asteroids. <laughs> it's wasting it all. I reckon on a planetary level, hundreds of tons is not that much. No, it's not very much no. at all. 
How heavy <laughs> is Earth in tons? 5.972 times 10 to the 21 tons. I think we'll be all right. We should be good, I yeah. think. <laughs> yeah, so how long they stay in the atmosphere is another one that, like I've said, um, and they all stay in the atmosphere long enough to become well mixed, which means that the amount that's measured in the atmosphere is roughly, roughly the same all over the world, regardless of where it's emitted. So just because, say, um, the US is uh, chugging out tons of carbon dioxide doesn't mean that us in the UK don't need to worry because mm -hmm. it, it goes up, stays for a long time, gets mixed, and it affects the whole planet. Yeah. Um, and then the third, the third factor is how strongly they impact the atmosphere. So some gases are are better at others at making the planet warmer. Um, CO two. So basically, how we've done this, by the way, how we measure how uh, bad a uh, a gas is for the for the planet, how much it warms the planet, is through its global warming potential. Um, CO two has a GWP um, of one regardless of the time period used because it's used as a reference do you know what i mean so yes um, yes, so, yes it's the baseline yeah carbon dioxide is our is our baseline for um gwp global warming potential so do 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 so then you've got methane which has a gwp of between 28 to 36 Whoa. over 100 years wow yeah um so it's it's a lot worse than carbon dioxide is but as i said it doesn't last in the atmosphere quite as long Mm. Uh, so it lasts um uh, it, it lasts about a decade on average which is a lot less than um carbon dioxide but it absorbs so much more oh sorry so but it absorbs much more energy which is why it's the issue so you are actually going to see a fairly decent i mean obviously i have a bias here but i think that if we actually reduced say our our meat intake as a country and as a as a globe that would be quite a fast one to see the effects of it because so much of the methane comes from meat and dairy production that and it only takes 10 years to leave the atmosphere you'd actually that's quite a quick one i would assume then yeah it would be quick but then also it'd be difficult from all the other stuff we've talked about it would be difficult to see because the in, the increase would be the rate of increase would be going up mm. already so because we oh sure yeah, i just yeah. mean in terms of things that that a normal person can do to help contribute contribute to flattening the curve that would be a fairly good one yeah, absolutely. There's a whole section at the end about um what and what the average person can do. But yeah, you're you're right. That would be that would be something that we would be able to probably measure quite quickly. Yes, yes. Within our lifetimes, you'd see the difference. Whereas if there's something that okay. takes a thousand years to leave the atmosphere, you're not necessarily going to see the difference. So I wouldn't say you would see, you can see the difference because sorry, measure the difference. There, yeah, there's a chance that over your lifetime, through um, reducing your meat intake, you would be able to measure. A, you would be able to, they would be able, we would be able to measure the difference. I would just hesitate, be, hesitate to say we would be able to see because just. It's still on an upward trajectory yeah, curve, but it would be less terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Our future Flatten is slightly curve. less terrible. Because it's, happens, yeah, look, yeah. it's still going to get worse. And for the average person, if you are going to notice anything, you're going to notice it getting worse. But just bear in mind that it won't be as worse as it could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so nitrous oxide has a GWP of 265 to 298. Whoa. Where does um, nitrous oxide come from? Uh, nitrous oxide, as I said, it comes from um, agricultural and industrial activities. So from fertilizers. Is that like nitrogen fixing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> also from um, fossil fuels and solid waste. So yeah, nit that, that's where nitrogen comes from. Any Anything that's kind of got um, nitrogen in it. Mm. will release into the atmosphere and that's generally fertilizers um they've got nitrogen mm. um so that stays in the atmosphere for about 100 years as i've said but it it's it's a lot worse than carbon dioxide in terms of um warming the globe and then cfcs um well cfcs hfcs and um perfluorocarbons all of those um those are called high gwp gases because they trap a lot more heat than co2 and mm -hmm. that could be thousands or tens of thousands <gasps> times carbon dioxide whoa yeah that's why we had to we were like yeah maybe let's stop using these as much as we were <laughs> but do yeah. they stick around a while or are they gone quick so they hold on i've got I mean, still bad either way but yeah um i don't know how i don't actually have data on how long they stay but if, if they're, they're tens of thousands of times more effective than carbon dioxide at trapping mm. heat yeah they'd have to be tens of thousands of times um shorter lived than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere yeah for us to be like considering that them not being quite as bad 
Yeah. According to Scientific American, uh, CFCs takes around 80 years to remove them from the atmosphere. Okay. And um, carbon dioxide takes about um, thousands of years. So, eh. Probably quite bad. It's still quite bad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 80 years is a long time for a, for a, for a human. Yeah, I mean, it's most of a human, isn't it? Hmm. That is most of a human. More than some human. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. It is. It's most of a human, and that's the issue that a lot of these, a lot of these things can't be seen easily. From uh, you can't see it really easily with the naked eye mm. or over a human lifetime. I mean, the, you can remember that it might have been colder when you were a child if you're a middle-aged or old person, but ultimately, that's not something that you can very easily see. I mean, if you look at say, um, people used to go ice skating mm. um, on the Thames. Did they? Or, no, yeah. On the Thames. yeah, they did. You used to go ice skating yeah. on the Thames. Yep. What? <laughs> the the surface level of the Thames would freeze enough for people to go ice skating. That's. So I think that was back weird. in the well, that was in the Victorian era, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. What? The hell? So not within the Doctor Who episode with that in it. Yep. Uh, uh, one with Matt Smith and Clara. Is it? Yes. Yeah. No, okay. it's not. It's the Twelfth Doctor and Clara. Sorry, yes, it's Peter Capaldi. Peter Capaldi. Peter, Cap- <laughs> Peter, Peter Capaldi. Peter uh, Capaldi. I've run into him twice in London, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. It's very odd. He's following me. Anyway, no. Um. So yeah, the the Thames used to freeze over enough that we could ice skate on it, and now the thought of it ice doesn't. skating on the Thames would be a thought of drowning. <laughs> yeah, like I I never considered that being a possibility. It's baffling, isn't it? Um. So why don't we why don't we do a quick little test here? Who do you Ooh, think, okay. um, in terms of countries, who do you think um, are the top three emitters of carbon dioxide? Worst offenders? China, yeah, so, okay. India, and America. No, I will say that, yeah, that's right. What you, yeah! China, India, and America. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is right. Um, now, the EU um, is actually higher than India, um, if you count them all as one place. But uh, There's a lot of countries in one, though. There's a lot it? of countries in one, so uh, it's, it's, it's... Are they the highest per bad. capita as well, I believe, as well? So this is just overall. I don't know per capita. Who, oh, right. overall, it's because India well, and China yeah. have really... no. I, so I per capita definitely not. Uh, so China, uh, just just to give you a look at this, China is um, about eleven thousand megatons of CO two per year, and the US oh, wow. is about five thousand megatons of CO two per year. So per capita, China's definitely not. So per capita, according to Wikipedia, which obviously take with a slight uh, pinch of salt, um, is. Uh, Kuwait, Brunei, Nui, Nui, and then Qatar. That's so interesting. Worst offenders um, ever. United States is like about 15th on the list. Um, China is way down. China is really low. United, China is, is one above the United Kingdom. Oh, this is a, really? This is data from 2013. So yeah. Oh, that's like, fairly out of date though. Per capita, yeah. So this... Like, yeah, no, fair enough. That's that. That isn't really interesting to look at as well because you can you do forget that China's about what twenty percent mm-hmm. of, sure, of the yeah. world population. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't have twenty percent of the <laughs> the. It's so strange thing. Yeah. Um. So this is from this is from data from two thousand eighteen. Um. China has got about eleven thousand megatons. U.S. five thousand. Um. The EU three thousand and India about two thousand six hundred. Um. Sorry, the EU is three thousand four hundred. Uh, megatons of co2 released per year so yeah i mean it's it's a big problem and y- it's really important to look at which countries are, are doing something about it I, I mean, interestingly that's... canada and the united states um in 2018 the data said that they emit the same amount 16.1 megatons per capita so um metric tons per capita so like we we because because china's uh, sorry canada's getting a good rap at the moment with a really good sort of pr image and looking like a really good country mm. um but they're just as bad as america uh per capita at uh at co2 emissions what about the u what funny. about the uk per capita the uk is uh way down okay 5.6 5.6 per capita but the really important thing to to take into account here is that say for example you imagine like someone like china is really is actually actually pretty good to be fair but you have to take into account the fact that we have shipped off as as the western countries Mm. shipped off a lot of our 
horrible industries to other countries mm -hmm. where the labor is poorer and we still get the benefits of sorry the labor is cheaper and we still get the benefits of that labor without any of the grossness of <laughs> having that labor um in our countries or any of the outputs of greenhouse gases in our countries so it's not entirely fair to take a measurement like this yeah what is it what would be interesting to, would be to look at who's spending the money on it like for each carbon footprint you know yeah as in yeah. so the u.s has yeah. got five thousand but how much of china's um how much of china's emissions come from products that are then shipped to the u.s that'd yeah. be a, that'd be a much better graph to look at um yeah. so but yeah so that i mean it's important it, it is important to look at which countries are doing something about it and which countries aren't um so i mean one question that one could ask is is climate change real there's a question I've got written down here. Is climate change real? And the answer is yes. Come on. It, I mean, this is the entire I mean, episode has been... Our best guess is that yes, it is real. Not guess. <laughs> our best informed our be uh, our conclusion. Best stab yeah. in the dark. No, it's not stab in the dark. I've got a really nice graph that shows um, the <laughs> the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, which, I mean, you can look at right now, Jamp. Oh, gosh. Why don't you what, say what you see? Oh, gosh. Let me read those numbers down the bottom. I mean, oh, I so those are those are years. Okay, yeah. so it's kind of fluctuating. It goes back about eight hundred thousand years. It's a it's a graph fluctuating up and down. It's a it's a cycle of about a hundred thousand years, and then in the past, it's like it looks like it's going straight up vertical, which yeah. which is just really recently. It's uh, as soon as you hit, decided to spike. As soon as you hit about nineteen fifty, between nineteen fifty and today, it looks like a straight line upwards. It's just a vertical line upwards. You see that? You see that, Luke? I don't know if you can. Oh, remember. wow. <laughs> yeah. It's really, no, it's, it's really, it's really bad. I mean, um, as I said, Earth's climate's changed throughout history, but, um, and in the last 650,000 years, there've been seven cycles of glaciers advancing and retreating. Um, but most of these, most of these climate changes are to do with small variations in the Earth's orbit, mm. um, which changes the amount of sunlight the, the Earth gets. But the current trend which is with 95 or more percent certainty, uh, that is the result of human activity since the mid-20th century. And it's going at a rate which is unprecedented over like, decades to millennia. This is something that we just haven't seen happen in not just human history, but yeah. really the history of the planet. Like We've not seen this much carbon dioxide just be shot, shot up. up. It does just look vertical. It is a, just a vertical just line. Exploding. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. And do you know what I'll do? If you're if you're listening to this, um, I'll chuck up these graphs on I'll chuck up these graphs on Twitter mm -hmm. for you to have a look at. Because just visualizing how bad the situation is, um, in terms of what we've done, puts it in perspective. It's, yeah, it? it's really important. It really puts it in perspective. Um, we've got um satellites that are orbiting the Earth, and and other kind of uh pieces of technology which have allowed us to look at the Earth on a much bigger scale than we would have been able to before. And we've gotten a lot of different types of information and all of this data points to climate change being something that is happening and something that is caused yeah. by human activity. And so we've gone through all of the data. We've gone through basically how these greenhouse gases work. We've gone through briefly how we get them into the atmosphere. We've gone through yeah. what we've seen happening over the past few decades to, to more than that. I don't understand. Um, and this isn't, this isn't, um, an attack. I genuinely don't understand how someone could see all of this data and decide that climate change isn't nah, happening. It's conspiracy and isn't or isn't happening because of well, um, human activity. That's it's it's because they don't. I think that's uh, okay. Look, I'm not trying to apologize for people who spread these ideas, but <coughs> it's not because they haven't looked at the data. It's or not because they haven't got access to the data. It's because they have been either been taught or have learned through bad actors to distrust authority and you know to come to conclusions on their own and that's horrible it's dreadful and i don't think people should we we should be trusting each other and behaving as a global um community um but i don't think it's because they're looking at the data and going no i think um, it's much deeper than that so i'm not saying that th so i'm not saying that someone's looking at the data and saying no so my point of my point my my question is I I don't really understand how someone can look at this data and disagree with it. And I'm not saying that that's what people are doing. I'm saying that that's that seems so absurd. So clearly there is there is another 
reason behind it. And yeah. the reason that I see this episode as a spiritual sequel to our vaccines episode is because the answer is exactly the same. It's yeah. it's 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 not it's not um, looking at science or logic. It's just a conspiracy. It's yeah. it's it's people acting um, sometimes in bad faith and sometimes in good faith, but um, quite a lot of people acting in bad faith mm-hmm. to spread the myth that it's not happening because they're making money from this. Yeah, think about it. It's the same. I think again, it goes back to the distrust yes. of the unknown. I mean, it's this. It's the same question that I asked back in the in the vaccines episode, and it's kind of flipped on its head in this yeah. case. I asked, uh, "Who is making money from this?" So, in in the case of the vaccines episode, well, vaccines. People say that vaccines are fake because, um, uh, people said the vaccines are fake, and I said, "Well, they they can't be because rich people get vaccines." Yeah. Um, look where the money is going. In this case, the people that deny climate change are the ones who actively make money from oh yeah uh, from the practices that we want to stop that that's true yes but there are also people who make a massive amount of money from climate change uh, from climate change as it happens in terms of manufacturing and building the solutions to climate change and uh, people who make a lot of money out of the manufacturing and dis, uh, distribution of um vaccines mm. and i think maybe part of where the it's a systemic issue where because there are people making mo- like there's people making money off of this horrible coronavirus situation yeah and maybe it comes from the fact that we have a system that rewards for some people horrible things happening we have a elected official in our government in our cabinet i believe whose investments are making him a lot of money off the fact that we've all got a coronavirus disaster we have giant multinational health or, or, or organizations raising the prices of their medical masks in order to make loads of money off of it and so you know until we fix if something bad happens people who people don't make loads of money off of that i think you're always going to have these problems that i mean that is really true i mean there there isn't anything more to say that you've concisely explained the issues with capitalism down with capitalism <laughs> Up with communism. That's well, the not show. Not necessarily down with capitalism, <laughs> but don't be surprised if people come up with a conspiracy theory. It's like you know, doctors are doctors require people to get sick in order to continue having jobs, and that doesn't mean the doctors are doing it because the people are getting sick, so the doctors stay in employment. But it does mean there is a causal link between people being sick and doctors having their salaries become higher, especially in private hospitals. Oh, um, and and so like. Uh, if the if somebody's brain is trying to is is worried and is anxious and is trying to spot patterns where there aren't patterns, you're going to get those things there, and that's not the fault of the doctor, and it's not necessarily even the fault of the person pegging uh, peddling the conspiracy theory. Because I think most of them actually genuinely believe the crap they dis- disseminate. I think they believe it. I don't think they don't believe it. I think they're just as crazy as their audience. So there's okay. So here's the thing. I mean, yes and yes and no. I, I would say a lot of the people that are peddling conspiracy theories. Um, do believe what they're saying, and uh, I mean, I I almost compl- completely agree with everything that you said. I'm not saying that. I mean, it, you can find a conspiracy theory in almost anything, yes, because through any situation, someone will gain something. Someone will lose, and yeah. someone will lose. Uh, I, I mean, in in this case, my my point is that the conspiracy of th- people have made up climate change. Um, people, the, the the conspiracy of people have made up climate change and it's not actually happening, and all of these scientists are saying, "Let's fight climate change." And, and understand? I mean, it's understandable as mm. a, I mean, it's understandable as a kind of as a conspiracy theory. But ultimately, if you look, if you were to look at the data and just the data, and not not even say the, the trusting authority. I mean, if you look at the data yourself, you can you can see that there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than before. You can see that the, the temperatures have risen. The, where that where that falters is you'd have to then disagree with who's making the measurements and yes. say that that's a lie. Which, yes. if, it, which is the same thing that I think I've said in the vaccines episode is if you get to the point of distrusting all information that's given to you, yeah. then don't believe anything. Believe yeah. what you want. It, 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 logic becomes meaningless if you are deciding what information is... Um, trustworthy and what information isn't from an authority figure um and 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 on the point of um on the point of people believing their um their theories uh, i would say there's ben shapiro there's um stephen crowder there there are a lot of people who alex jones 
Yeah, you see, like there are there are a lot of people out there who are sitting and making a ton of money from from this uh, and and from telling people exactly what they want to hear. And I, I genuinely, I would I would like to believe that these people don't believe what they're peddling. They just are peddling it because it makes them money. And and the reason that I would I would say that is because if you look into the arguments that they give, they are very flimsy and they mm. and on purpose they will. Um, take little pieces of the data to not give people the whole picture, mm. and I'm, I'm not saying that everyone that believes in this is um, is lying to you. Some people genuinely will believe in it, mm-hmm. but I think you need. To, I think it's important to be aware of people who are acting in bad faith. Yeah, I mean, for for example, I've called back to the vaccines episode multiple times, but I don't know if I believe the the guy that uh, started the whole vaccine conspiracy really believed that vaccines caused caused autism. Because he was making money from it, I think he believed that hey, if I, like this is this MMR thing is going to make me more money. Yeah, he could have believed it at some point, but no. yeah, I, I, when 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 money gets involved, your, your motive can change, even if you don't believe in it anymore. I guess what I'm what I'm part of what I'm getting at is I think that I think we make a gigantic assumption when we se- when we think that we trust science and we trust any of the things we trust because we're just intelligent or are better people or as if we didn't make that decision as if that decision wasn't made for us by how we were born what area we were born in who brought us up the fact that we were taught well like to i think that we are all making all the things that we choose quote choose to believe we don't really choose to believe them and these people aren't choosing to believe the things they're believing either i think our brain is just constantly trying to make sense of things in the way that it possibly can and to to think that you or i or james or any of the people who trust science did that consciously because we are smart and the people who don't do that did that consciously because they're stupid is I think disingenuous, so, I, I, and and it, it it it's because we want to paint ourselves as well. I'm a smart and good person, and the other people are not smart and good people. Yeah, I I, I don't at all mean if that if that's if that's what it came off. I don't at all mean to say that people that no, no, believe no, no. this, this are. Not, this is not me accusing you of saying anything. Okay, that's that's totally you're... fine. I mean that all of us mm. believe that we made the decisions to believe the things we believe because we're cleverer than than the people who are believing the silly thing. And the the decision, it's like if you are brought up in a lower economic status family, you don't trust the police or the government. Mm -hmm. And that's not your decision. And if you are brought up in a middle class family, you do trust the police and the government. And that wasn't your decision either. And neither of you are smarter or dumber for not having trusted the thing or just making decisions based on the experience you've had. And science and medical industry and all these things are part of the system. And if the system helps you and does you well, then you trust it and you believe it. And if the system, as the overall system of the world, of democracy, of government, of science, isn't helping you, then you don't trust it. And that's not a decision any of us make. And that's totally fair. Um, I think... I think We what need to I, do a better job, is yeah, what I mean. I think what I would say to that is that just... I, I, I would never... I wouldn't look down on... Uh, the same with the... I don't think you are. Don't no, no, no. I'm saying, no, no. I'm, I, I just want to. So I, the same with the vaccines. I wouldn't look down on people that believe this because it's it's a very convincing argument. Really? If, you really don't think you'd ever look down on somebody who believed vaccines are a Chinese conspiracy? I wouldn't look down on It'd them. It's very and, natural to look down on them. Okay. No, I wouldn't look down on them in <laughs> look, in the same way that I in the same way that I'm not a particularly <laughs> a particularly religious person, and I I personally believe that it's all a little bit silly. Um, I wouldn't then look down on someone that is religious because they don't think the same as me because they have they have different experiences and they've got different evidence um the difference where it comes to vaccines is that it's almost categorically not true um and it's something that is fairly provable what i would look down on is the moving of the goalposts i agree with you that it's fairly provable using the scientific model and the scientific model i i think it's objectively correct as far as we know, but there are people for whom all the systems and modes of thought of our society and of of all of our power structures are pushed down and don't serve them. And so Mm. they distrust it all 
on principle. Which, all which of is it. which is why I can't really say that I'd that I'd look down on anyone anyone for that because anyone can be in a position of believing uh, something for whatever reason, um, and it is entirely based on it's entirely based on where they've come from and what information they've been given. People don't necessarily choose to believe what they believe. Um, I guess, I guess kind of to wrap this, this, <laughs> to wrap this segment up, it's, it's not a case of looking down on people that, um, are climate deniers. It's not a case of looking down on people that genuinely believe, um, this thing that they believe. Yeah. Look, I mean, it's more, yeah, it's a case of just, it's a case of just looking at who is disseminating the information and and really what their intentions behind that are because ultimately just people on the street are that just that are just believing it um yeah. you can you can turn they can change their mind on it and there's a reason that they believe it but in a lot of cases uh people that believe things like this tend to listen to people that tell them exactly what they want to hear about it and that's how that's how this whole thing continues to go you just hear you hear um what you want to hear and that's it I don't want to believe that we're destroying the planet and I don't want to, I don't want to have to like, you know, I don't want to have to like be vegan or, um, drive less or take any of the measures that we should take to limit our impact on the planet. Mm. But I do it because eh, just in case. And also the way that like where the evidence points, that evidence seems to be the most, should. yeah, that seems to be the most likely thing, the, the most likely thing that we can do to stop this issue. So I think out of all of this, I would say, challenge your views and make sure you are listening to people that um that challenge your views because otherwise you're you're never going to get out of the cycle of believing what it is that you want to believe rather than what might be more likely to be true mm -hmm. but do you listen to people who might challenge your views other than me <laughs> um i mean i mean do you do you listen to people who might question the entire nature of the scientific model I listen like, to you all the time. Well, no, sure, I other mean, than I, me. <laughs> I mean, th okay, like so you can't accuse people of not doing that if you don't do that yourself. Uh, what I'm saying is, there's a there's a level of there's okay, so there's a level of looking into challenging your views. So I could look and I could constantly listen to people that challenge the scientific model, but then I'm, I'm talking more about on an issue by issue basis. So for the vaccines, when I did that episode, yeah, I absolutely went and tried to get the other side. So that I could understand it and make sure that I that I believe what I believe. When it comes to the, I mean, I, who would I don't you even... think you could. I don't think you could possibly. You couldn't possibly understand. None of us could possibly understand the opinions of somebody who doesn't believe in vaccines, whilst we believe in the scientific model. I don't think that would be possible for you to understand where they're even coming from, because I'm, you would still be looking at it through a scientific lens. But that, that's the thing. I'm not trying to... The thing. I'm not saying that I'm... That I will read it and I will fully understand. My point is that I try to go... I, I try as, as hard as I can to go in with an open mind to see where they are coming from on an, on an issue, and and then it's it's a case of challenging your views. It's a case of not dismissing what someone says outright it, it's a case of it's a case of looking at the evidence that they give you and then deciding based on that whether you agree or disagree if you're asking for someone to constantly challenge their views on everything with every single with every single uh, point of view and understand that opinion then that's something that's impossible for people to do i'm just saying that you should make a case you should definitely make an effort to uh, to pay attention to things that challenge your worldview because otherwise you get stuck in a kind of echo chamber mm. and you, you don't hear, if you don't hear things you don't like, then you won't ever grow mm. uh, it, from the other, from the other end. Let's say if someone was, if someone was um, say racist and they only ever listen to racist, they're always going to be racist. Uh, whereas if you start listening to people that are saying, Hey, maybe racism is a bad thing, then you'll probably over time change your views. I think you just need to be open to changing your views. Understand, understand that it's okay to be wrong about something. And you should be open to being wrong about something. Yeah. So that was a that was a question of is it real if we bring it back <laughs> if we bring it <laughs> back in. Uh yeah. I mean effectively we do think it's real. Um and if you if you disagree then okay. That's fine. I've given you all the evidence that I can and I if if you disagree then I would genuinely just ask you to consider in yourself why it is that you disagree. And if it's a mistrust yeah. of authority, like I've said, um, then consider where that leaves you in believing anything. Um, 
and and why you might believe that you could go to the doctor and be fine, but that climate change is something to avoid. I, I would just say, consider why you believe the things that you believe. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've, all of these things we've seen, you know, the warming is, um, most of the warming's happened in the past 35 years. The five warmest years on record, um, happened since 2010. And not only was 2016 the warmest year on record, um, but, uh, but eight of the 12 months that made up the year from January through to September, with the exception of June, um, were the warmest on record for those respective months uh, in 2016. Jeez. Uh, the ice sheets have, have been depleting. Uh, so Greenland lost an average of 286 billion tons of ice per year between 1993 and 2016. Antarctica lost about 127 billion tons of ice per year during the same time period. Um, and the rate of Antarctica ice mass loss has tripled in the last decade. Uh, satellites have seen that snow cover has been less, uh, has been like, you know, decreasing. So spring snow cover in the Northern Hemisphere has decreased over the past five decades and the snow is melting earlier and the seas have become more acidic. So since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the acidity of surface ocean waters has increased by about 30%. Um, and that's the result of, as I've said, emitting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which gets absorbed by the oceans, making them more acidic. Mm -hmm. Um, and the amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by the upper layer of the oceans is increasing by about 2 billion tons per year. Um, so all of this obviously begs the question, can we stop it? So in October 2018, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, issued a special report um, basically on how global warming had um, affected the planet. Um, and it said that 1.5 degrees centigrade is the level that we don't want to go past. Um, and if we try to limit it to that, then we would have to do, we'd have to do a lot. This is not yeah. a small thing. We'd have to do a lot, yeah. but we might be able to manage it if we limit the global increase in temperature to mm -hmm. one point five degrees centigrade. Um, and it, it's also it also highlights a lot of things that will happen. Um, the difference between one point five to two degrees. So uh, by two thousand one hundred, the global sea level rise would be ten centimeters lower um, with one point five degrees compared to two point five uh, two degrees. Um, increase and the likelihood of an arctic ocean completely free of ice in the summer would be once per century um oh, with wow. a, with a global warming of 1.5 compared to once per decade if we up it to uh, uh, wow. two degrees yeah coral reefs would decline by 70 to 90 percent with global warming of 1.5 degrees whereas virtually all which is over 99 percent would be lost with two degrees so, I mean, even looking at this, if we limit it to 1.5 degrees, we're still losing up to 90% of our coral reefs, but at least we're not losing bad. all of them. It's a bad yeah. situation and we need to start, we, we need to start working on this like 20 years ago Yeah, to stop it's it. It's already nearly too late. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it, it's, we basically need to really quickly change our way of life, um, in, in kind of two ways. There's, there's two ways to do it, um. There's, there's mitigation, which is basically reducing how much greenhouse gases get into the atmosphere, and then a, um, adaptation, which is learning to live with and adapt to the changing environment caused by global warming. Yeah. Um, so basically, th what, what the, the question we want to ask is, like, what will those emissions be in the future? Um, and, and, how do we kind of, and how do we cut that down? Um, because the, one of the biggest things is the use of fossil fuels, um, oil, coal, and natural gas. Uh, burning them releases carbon dioxide into the air and then obviously gets into stuck in the atmosphere all the things we've gone through. Uh, that we're losing forests because we're cutting them down, which means we can't take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And th the real issue is big corporations that just pollute the planet to make money. I mean, I mean, we want to replace fossil fuels with cleaner energy, but obviously oil companies like BP and Shell don't want that happening. In fact, they get involved with governments and put money behind stopping um, legislation changing to, uh, you know, to help fight climate change because that would affect their bottom line. Yeah. Uh, another thing is we need to stop overfishing. We need to make, let the oceans get back to their natural cycle. Yeah. I mean, that that's, that's the point. Mitigation and adaptation. We've already set, we've already set it in motion, but we need to make sure that we we're building cities that, um, that are able to cope with the changes to the, to the climate and also don't contribute any more, um, any more change. Uh, and this, this happens at like every level. Mm -hmm. It happens at the personal level, right up to governmental and global. And obviously as an individual, there's only so much you could do, but if you make sure that 
at every level people are doing what they're supposed to do it, we can change this so it feels really difficult if th it feels like it could feel like most of the world is against you mm. but if you are voting say, let's say if you're voting for candidates that um pledge to fight climate change and you are talking to the people that you know about that and convincing them to do that as well then you'll have candidates that want to uh, fight against climate change if you do that ac across multiple areas you'll have governments that want to do it if you do that across multiple countries you'll have mm -hmm. A, a planet that wants to do it every decision you make it has an impact on this and ultimately yes it's it's the corporations that um it's the corporations that are doing the the, the main bulk of this but we can still don't think you're as powerless. individuals fight them yeah don't think you're powerless so uh, what can i do i've basically got a list of uh, a short list gonna, of things here that's gonna be my question so i've got a short list uh -huh. um, of things that the average person can do I'll just burn through them really quickly, like we've done with the fossil fuels. Um, number one, use more fuel efficient vehicles and modes of transport. So like walk if you can, try and use yep. electric vehicles, but don't just ditch your car and get an electric one because obviously the manufacturer of electric vehicles still contributes. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, it still contributes yeah, yeah. to <laughs> climate change. Cycling's quite fun. Yeah, cycling's Take great. Up cycling. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, e even all these things like, you know, Boris bikes and, and all of that sort of stuff. It's it, try and make those little decisions that then have bigger impacts. Mm -hmm. um, after that, uh, it, it, meat is a massive contr uh, contributor to this. Yeah. Um, cows, um, well, I mean, okay, so if- Animal agriculture in general is yeah. quite bad. In particular, the meat and dairy sector though, it, it's one of the biggest contributors to climate change. If cattle were a country in and of themselves, so basically if cows were a country, they would be um, just behind China and the US in terms of uh, carbon <gasps> emissions. <gasps> Wow. Yeah. So maybe stop eating red meat, stop drinking milk. Uh, the, the issue, the thing is, I'm not saying go vegan completely. Just try and limit your intake of, of meat because it is having a massive effect. We started but eating Corey, more meat over the past few years. Where will all the cows go? They'll die. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll just won't be born. And that's fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, be flexitarian if you can. <clears throat> try and fly less because a normal transatlantic round trip can release 1.6 tons of carbon dioxide which is almost as much as the average yearly emissions of one person in India. Uh, which again, like I said, it's unequal. I mean, people in richer countries contribute more, more. but it's felt more by people in poorer countries. Mm -hmm. um, another one that you can do is uh, fast fashion is a massive issue. Um, the clothing sector, sector, so the clothing sector represents about 3% of the world's global um, CO2 emissions, uh, mostly because of um, the energy used to make the clothes. And it, so I'm not a, I'm not super into fashion, but I do know that apparently seasons, fashion seasons, mm. have basically shortened down to being weeks. Oh yeah, they're weekly now. They're weekly. What? Yeah. You go on ASOS. Yeah. Go on ASOS. Go on uh, what Nasty Gal. Any of those boohoo. Any of those online sort of um, any of those online they'll send send the clothes out to you sort of things. They have got new lines coming out every single week. What? I think it was Lucy Moon that I was talking There's to about no this, reason. and she was like, I mean she was just obviously she's big on sustainability and she was yeah. saying about how it has shortened down to a week and it's absolutely it's absolutely ridiculous how people can just buy things and Every, they break yeah. and they forget about them it's the it's the equivalent it's the difference between like saying buying ikea furniture which is cheap yeah. and quick and will break after a bit and buying like an oak table which will last forever 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 go to um like sort of thrift shops buy clothes that are going to last don't mm -hmm. just get get something on asos every other week because um it, it's it does have an effect on the planet it doesn't feel like it might but it, it does um try and use more you know uh, try and use more renewable energy sources if you can if you can get um solar panels attached to your roof then do it they're much cheaper than they were people will think oh yes these are really expensive things and mm -hmm. they were expensive when i was in school when i was in yeah. primary school and at the start of high school but they've gone down in price over yeah. a, over this period of time the demand for them exactly and if you can't do all of that because obviously this is a drastic change in life we can't all do this but use your money wisely Let's take it bit by bit yeah i mean but i mean when i say use your money wisely, you don't I mean, have to go all in we live in a capitalist society generally yeah. most of us live in a capitalist society and in a capitalist society you don't just vote um oh, yeah, democratically you vote with your money you vote with your money yeah. spend money on companies that are pledging to um fight climate change mm -hmm. and and make sure that you you do your best to support the, the the organizations that are trying to fight it yeah and on top of that vote at all levels for candidates that are committed to reducing our um impact on the planet 
Because if you don't do that, then that's not it. If you don't do that, then there's <laughs> there's no way done. to change it. Yeah. Because we can, as individuals, sort out what corporations are doing, but yeah. we as individuals can choose the people who will have an effect on that. Um, and I'll tell you what, that is all of climate change Ooh, in wow. some amount of minutes. That was a hefty episode. But now yeah. it's time for my favorite part of the show. The quick fire quiz. The quick the fire, fire quiz. quiz. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Okay, so this one is a quick fire quiz. Question for you, Luke. First oh. question. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Who was the second top emitter of carbon dioxide in 2018? Which country? Uh, 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 India. Luke, I am sorry. It was not India. Jamp, I'm going to pass on to you for the steal. Oh, I've got 50 50 chance now. Was it by any chance? America, USA. It was the USA. Ding, yeah. ding, ding. That is right. Okay, so that is uh, one point for Jamp and none for Luke after the first round. Luke, I'm going to give you another question. Here's your chance to get back up in business. Dun, 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 dun. Other than carbon dioxide and methane, please name another greenhouse gas. Nitrogen oxide. Nitrous oh. oxide. Nitrous, Nitrous oxide. oxide. Ding, ding, yeah. ding. That is right. That is one point for you. Okay. Right. Here oh. we go. Jamp, oh. your yep. question now. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. What increase in global temperature has the IPCC set as their target to stay under? 1.5 degrees Celsius. Ding, ding, ding. Centigrade. That is right. Yeah. They are the same thing. <laughs> I wanted to sound smart. You did sound smart. You did Thank very you. well. <laughs> that Thank was very you. patronizing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did sound smart. Good boy. <laughs> so, Jamp, you are on two points. Luke, you are on one point. Mm -hmm. If you answer this question right, we go to a sudden death round. If you answer wrong, Jamp wins and you lose on our anniversary episode. Luke. Myself up. Yep. What is the name of oh. the Greenland, gr <laughs> the Greenland glacier that has grown? in recent years the transatlantic ice sheet luke that Shelf. is not right which means that jamp has won but jamp for an extra point and a little bit of a sweeter win do you know <laughs> the name of this ice sheet is it called now we had trouble with it but is it called jakob savon do you know what i'm gonna take that Gracia. ding 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 that is yeah. right Ugh. That is three points to Jamp, one point to Luke. Jamp, congratulations, oh, you've won the you. quickfire quiz oh, round. I'm the best at climate change. Um, I do have a few messages because it is our birthday episode. It's been one whole year of Sci Guys. That's unbelievable. Happy I can't birthday believe that. to Which is us. why Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Which is why I kept this climate change episode for this. I've, I've had it in the it's tank such for a good months. It's so long as well. Very long, yeah. So a whole year of Psy Guys and a year long episode to celebrate. So we've got some birthday messages. Uh, I've got one here from Natalia that says, Aww. Happy birthday, Psy Guys. Thank you for providing me with some virtual friends to keep me company in the past year, for making me smile and laugh over the tangents that the topics explored in this podcast lead you down and for being something I keep going for. Here's to another year of sciencey goodness. Hey! Yay! Lovely. Thanks, Natalia. Thank you very much, Natalia. Here's one from Eve. Happy first birthday, Sci Guys! Thanks a lot for cheering me up every week by introducing me to interesting and somewhat unusual parts of science. I'm so grateful for you guys and could not be more excited for another year of Sci Guys. Yeah. Yay! Thank you very much, Eve. And one last one from Tobias. Happy birthday, Sci Guys! You made me fall in love with learning again after me and learning had a falling out in after high school. <laughs> <laughs> Rediscovering the wonders of learning about new things is something I'll always be grateful for. Also, Brilliant. thank you for entertaining me every week on my train ride to university. You managed to make that suck less than it did before. Discovering you changed my life for the better and nothing less. I hope you'll continue this podcast for a long time. Hell thank you yeah. for all that you're doing. Thank you for listening. Toby. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you very you, much, guys. And happy birthday oh, those to are us. So sweet. Yeah. What a nice, what a nice year it's been. Oh, wow. It's been a long, long year. Shall we finish the show then? Here's to another yeah. year. Of oh, here's Sci to guys. another one. Oh, gosh. Oh, God.
Thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuy or find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCory everywhere. You can follow me at Jamkin everywhere. You can follow me at LukeCutforth everywhere. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.